everyone, it's Gail, your Fun Stampers Journey Coach, and today I'm going to do card number three in my uh, from my November Bloom Box. And for those of you that have not watched these this series, uh, this is the first card we did, and I will reference the um, the 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 card the video um, below in my in the description. But this is card number one, and then after that, I made card number two with the sparkles on the ice cream. Can you look at it? Sparkle and the little clip and the bow. So I'm going to now do card number three, and this is going to be card number three. It says, uh, as American as apple pie. And I just wanted to show you these. I'm going to do all four cards, and I'll do this every month for a while uh, until I can get a little practice in myself because I'm fairly new to cards, card making, and I'm just learning right along with you. But uh, every bloom box comes in a, in its a really nice box. It comes with all of the kits that are made separate. This one is for this card and you'll see it's got some twine and a button and some little uh, woven things here or little pieces of paper that you weave. Your card base, it's got everything you need except for adhesives and color. So um, I just wanted to show you but it comes in up and you get four of these little packages. So I've got this one and one more left. And then you have some tips inside the book. You get this little booklet with it. It uh, gives you some tips on how to do different things. And uh, then you go for each card. It's got the all of the um, pieces that you're going to need, all the items you're going to need to complete it. And over here is complete instructions. So what I've been doing, as with the other two cards, is I'm going to follow these instructions just the way that they're written so that you can see just how easy it is and how well the descriptions are given. So let me just take out all of my goodies from my bag for this card. And this one's going to be a little bit different in that we're going to weave a little basket. But we'll do that shortly. But this is some red... Uh, this is the Cranberry Bliss card stock. We've got a piece of limeade splash and then we have some uh, sorry my mind just went blank some uh, buttercream which is like a real beautiful ivory color and that's going to be our card base so I'm going to put the card base aside for a minute just to get it out of the way and we're going to work on these other things and it says on here uh, the first thing on here, it says, stamp the As American as Apple Pie sentiment on the right side of the buttercream strip using black licorice ink. So it tells you everything to do. So this is the buttercream cardstock, and I believe this is the strip they're talking about. Or maybe it's this one. I'm not sure what this one is for now that I think look at it but uh, this will go inside of the green so I'm sure this is the one they're talking about and the stamp that they're talking about is this one because in each bloom box there is also a stamp that is exclusive to the bloom box subscribers uh, in a the longest that it can, or the soonest that it could be distributed to the public would be um, three months. So at least for three months, nobody is going to have access to this stamp but you. And this one is called A La Mode. And there's nine stamps on here. And you can see there's apples, cinnamon, ice cream, and then some sentiments. So today we're going to use As American as Apple Pie. And let's pull that off here. And all of our stamps are red rubber stamps. And they're mounted on cling foam and they're all indexed. So you never have to worry 
about um, about your having to put on stickers or anything because they're already indexed. So I'm going to put this on my gridded block. See, all of our clear blocks have grids on them, and you can see how I got that even because I was able to line it up with a grid mark. And I'm, let me just move everything out of the way. Bring out the black licorice color fusion stamp pad. And the more I use this, the more I like it. I usually take the pad to the stamp, but this time I didn't, and I just want to make sure I'm getting everything on there. But then let me line this up on my grid paper. And then see if I can get this on here without sticking my head in the camera shot. I can't guarantee that. So if you see gray hair, it's me. But I think that's going to be about right. And I'll just put that down. And there we go. As American as apple pie. You can't get much more American than that. And I'm just going to stamp a little bit of excess ink off. My surface is sliding because I've got it on my tile that I use for polymer clay. And I'm just going to save this because I will clean it later. But I believe that's the only um, stamping we do with the black. And let's see. Now it says stamp full apple image two times and the apple once on whipped cream cardstock. Oh, we do use the whipped cream. Alright, that's what this is for. Except this isn't whipped cream. This is... Well, I guess they put in the buttercream and it says whipped cream over here. But that's okay. We've got this extra card, so now we know what it's for. Let me just put this aside because we've got that now stamped. And it says to stamp the full apple, which is going to be this one. And the full apple, apple pie, I'm sorry. Well, we'd use that. The full apple pie, which is this one. Let me see. Okay, I'm just sitting here reading the instructions because I got ahead of myself and I wasn't sure. So I am back to my black licorice. Sorry about that. It says stamp the full apple image two times the full apple pie. That's where I'm getting confused. I don't put pie in there. And since we don't have to worry about... about this being centered. Let me just stamp that. So we do two apple pies. And the full apple. And the apple once. You know, when I try to read ahead, sometimes I skip a step. You see, they even give you a little bit of extra cardstock in case you mess up your stamp, which I, since I've gotten used to this, I haven't done that much at all. So let me see. Stamp the full apple pie image two times and the apple once on whipped cream cardstock using black licorice ink. Color the pies using a couple shades of brown Journey Color Burst pencils and the apple using green and brown pencils. Detail cut around the outside edge of the images. Okay, so I do not have the... Um, 
color burst p pencils yet. That's on my list of things to get. So I'm just going to be using my uh, my regular pencils here. Uh, I believe these are just Crayola, but I can't wait to try the color burst because the color bursts, from what I understand, are so creamy and smooth, and I could really use that. So let's see. Using two colors of brown. So let me find two shades of brown. There's sort of a dark brown, and here's a little bit of a light brown. Let me see. see which ones go together the best. I think I'll do these two. So we're going to, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just take my color pencil, my light brown. I always start with the lightest color. And I'm going to color the pies all over. And because I want to create a white edge around the outside of my pies when I fussy cut, I'm going to try to stay inside the lines. Hopefully I'll be able to do that. I'm not the best colorer, but I've been watching some of the other coaches videos that are showing the color technique we're using our pencils because I want to be ready when my order gets here I want to be ready to go to work with my pencils so here I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out just trying different techniques And I'm, I apologize that you're having to watch me color. But one of the things that I've always wanted to do is do real-time videos. And unfortunately, with real-time videos, sometimes you have to watch some of the boring stuff. But I want to give you an idea of how quick and easy these cards are to make. Okay, so I've colored the two pies with one color brown. Now I'm going to go back with a darker color and just kind of fill in some of these little places where you would think it would be darker, like down in these little slits where the the butter and the sugar and the apples have caramelized and maybe around the edges a little bit where you get those really nice brown crust. I love pie crust. I don't make many. But I, I've always said the true measure of a good pie is the pie crust. I'm just going to kind of shade around the outside a little bit and along these places where you see the lines just to kind of give it a little bit of texture. Oops, I came outside of the line. And of course I don't have an eraser. I'll just keep on coloring and just kind of go around the edges for that toasted pie crust look. And shade along these little lines. From what I understand, the color burst pencils just glide like butter. They've got a little bit of wax in them, so you don't get the scratchiness that you get from cheap pencils like this. I bought these pencils 
back when the coloring craze first started because I used to love to color when I was a child. But I've only colored regular pictures. I never learned how to shade or use multiple colors. You know, like I would have just painted this brown, uh, colored this brown when I was a kid. And uh, so now I'm trying to learn how to shade and be a little more artistic. And I just can't wait to get those pencils. So I'm almost finished, or at least going around the edge. I still need to shade some of these areas. And when I see an area that's got more than one line, like here, there's a bunch of little different lines together, it gives me the impression that it's supposed to be shaded. So... I may even take the darker one and come in and do little triangles kind of from the inside out. I'm trying to think of what a apple pie looks like. I think I like that. Again, just to add a little depth. And this doesn't have to be solid. This can be just little lines. Yes, I think I like... Don't you like that one better than this one? So let me add some over here. Just to add a little shading. So there's my two apple pies, and then we are to use green, and let me pick a pretty color green. I want it to be just a regular green green. This is called holly. I think I want one a little bit yellower than this. That looks like a good apple green. That looks like a Granny Smith. So, again, I'm going to do a little darker along these lines. Go around the outside. At least this one's kind of smooth. And I'm going to go around the outside, then I'm going to come back and shade where those multiple lines are. Remember I said I feel like where the multiple lines are, they want some kind of shading. So I think I'm going to shade in here a little bit lighter. And then I'm just going to barely go over the rest of this, just very lightly, just so it's not white. And maybe make this a little bit darker. And I do believe I'm going to use a darker green for the leaf. Because your leaf isn't usually the same color as your apple. And then I'm 
going to use the brown again for the stem. There we go. So we're done with our coloring. So now we're going to cut these out using the Design Pro Detail Pro scissors. And I'm going to cut these apart just because it would make it easier to get to the to the design. And I'm going to knock my instructions over. I've got them barely propped up there. And I want to leave a little bit of white on the outside. Not much. Do you notice I'm turning the paper, I'm not turning the scissors. That's an important thing to remember when you're fussy cutting, is don't turn the scissors. You have much better control. Let me cut this off. You have much better control if you turn the paper. You also get a much better line. Because you have more control. There we go. So there's our apple cut out. This shouldn't take as long to do the pies. Again, I'm going to just fussy cut around and I'm not going to worry about my lines. I'm just going to leave a little bit of white and because this is roughly, you just do a rough cut. Doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is a handmade card. And I believe me, anybody you give this to is going to be really impressed with your cutting skills. And they don't have to know how easy it is. Okay, so there's one pie. These scissors make it so easy. Whoops, I almost cut all the white off there. I'll have to trim this one a little closer. Which is okay, since this is the one that I went outside of the lines on. But you want to try to keep it as... as evenly spaced as you can. The white around the edge I'm talking about. But that's okay. It's not a big deal. If you mess up, just keep cutting. Like I said, if you give this to someone that is not a card maker, they're going to be so impressed that you even did this. Plus, leaving the white around the edge just really gives it a nice finished look. There. So there's my two pies and my apple. Detail cut around the edge of the images. Taking the oatmeal cookie cardstock, which is this, weave the strips together, creating a square, which I am going to do, but I did. Let me. I guess that's just one. It felt like two. Let me see. Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. One of these is double. I 
or else I've totally miscounted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and I need twelve. Where is the twelfth one? interesting. Let me see if I pulled it out. I do remember taking them out to look at and maybe I didn't get that back in the bag. I don't see it in my box. So I think what we'll do is instead of doing a six by six we'll do a five by five. Four, five, two, three, four, five, and I've got one over here. And if I happen to see the other one, if it pops up anywhere because I did drop them down into my drawer. It's very possible there's one down in this drawer, but I don't see it, so I'm going to assume it's not there. I work with an open drawer right in front of me, and that way it when I work with my clay, it helps me to catch things that drop. So let me do this. But first, the thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sponge. And I should have some sponges here in this drawer. says to do this afterwards, but I think I'm going to do this beforehand. Excuse me, I'm getting my drawer all stuck. I'm going to take the... I'm going to take the oatmeal cookie. And just ink up the edges of this. Anybody that has done any card making at all knows how to ink up the edges of a piece of paper. But I think it will help bring out the weave that we're going to be doing. We're going to weave this into a basket. Just put a little bit of oatmeal cookie around the edges and it doesn't have to be much and don't worry if you miss like that you're going to be weaving it so chances are that's not going to show if it does show it just looks like more of a basket weave it look more like a basket so there's three This is the one that seems to feel thick, but it's just one piece of cardstock. All of our cardstock is 80 pound cardstock, which is a really good firm cardstock anyway. And rather than watch me do this, I will go ahead and turn, stop the camera just so you won't be so bored. Okay, and just like I thought, I found the 12th strip. It had fallen in my drawer and I couldn't, I didn't see it. I, it was just really bugging me because I couldn't believe that they wouldn't have included all of the strips. So sure enough, I found it in my drawer. So I'm going to line up six of these, three, four, five, six, and I'm sure you know how to weave, 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with one and go over and under. Over and under. I'll tell you, the best way to do this is to set them like this. And put this across. And then lay this. The first one you can do this way. After the first one you can't do this. And you move these closer because evidently this was just wide enough. And we can straighten it up later. But then here, and I'm just going to put my hand there, I'm going to just lift these up. Whoops, there it goes back into my drawer again. This drawer has been a lifesaver, but it is also a hazard. Let's pull this up. And then you slide that up to that one. And you can see we're not very... Let's see... Let me pull this down to the edge. I'll pull that down to the edge. And one thing that might help keep this together is to use just a drop of glue. But I'd rather wait till I get this together just so I can make sure I get it woven tightly. And I'm not sure exactly how tight this will go. So let me wait on the glue. All right, and I take the next one. So that one went under. So this one's going to go over and then under and over and under and over. and under and then slide that up see it's beginning to look like a little basket okay so then this one needs to go under and over and whoops it's upside down under and over gotta make sure you have your shading on the right side And slide that up. I'm beginning to like the way this is looking. Okay, and then over and under, over and under, and over and under. And slide that up and I'm really not going to have well if I pull these down I need to have room just for one more little strip pull that down there and just to even it up slide that over and then even this up with the strip and slide it over. Just might take a little finagling here to get your basket weave look. Pull this one down a little bit, and this one down a little bit. And see if we have enough room to put one more strip in here, which I think we can. I might have to pick it up to do it. Maybe you can see my over and under doing it this way. And 
over this one and then we'll be done with the weave there now let's just press everything in together try to get it as tight as we can the only reason I want to do it tight is just want to make sure that everything fits but I think that looks pretty good just like that now what I'm going to do I think I will use a little drop of glue because I'm going to be trimming this. So I'll add a little drop here. Just add them on the ends. Make sure they're all slid up as tight as you want them. Put a little bit here. And you just want enough glue to make sure that it gets, that it holds. So then we're going to go across the bottom and put just a drop. You could use your glue dots. The journey dots you could use the easy glide I just thought this would be the easiest and it's just to hold it so that it doesn't slide loose after you get it all together And I don't even think it's necessary on the others as long as we've got it on the every other one. I think just enough, like I said, just enough to hold it. You might want to turn it over and just press. And then I'm going to trim around these edges. Just so it looks kind of square. Just trim even with the strip the out the strip that's going in the direction you're cutting. See this strip is going in this direction so I'm cutting even with that strip. And I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to cut even with this strip. That one looks pretty good, and this side needs a little bit of a trim, but not much. Seems like I had two sides lined up pretty well, but I guess that's what happens when you're trying to weave something. You don't know until after you're finished how it's going to turn out. So now we've got that. And I think what I'm going to do is take my hazelnut blend. It actually, it says here, to, um, where does it say? It says, trim to square, sponge oatmeal cookie and hazelnut blend onto the top and edges of the woven panel. So we've already done the inside part. So I'm going to take my same sponge and I'm going to use the hazelnut blend, Color Fusion ink, and I'm just going to highlight a few little places maybe where I trimmed there isn't any ink coloring that this is going to be just a little bit darker than the oatmeal cookie and then I'm going to take a sponge and just very lightly go across the top and this is kind of supposed it's supposed to look kind of rustic so I'm sure it doesn't really matter what you do. I got a little heavy with the sponge here, but that's all right. I will put one of my apple pies there or something. But let me just touch it up a little bit with the hazelnut blend. And I really like that look. Okay, I think we are now ready to put our card together. 
So let me put everything to the side. Now this is the buttercream card base that was in the kit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over and match the corners and then crease it with this wonderful crease tool. I mean, it just slides over the cardstock just like butter. I just love it. And I've got two or three other crease tools that I've been using and don't like any of them as much as this. So there's that. And it says, um, adhere the greeting stamped buttercream strip onto the limeade splash strip. So here's the limeade splash and I'm going to use my easy glide for this. This is wonderful. I am so tape uh, runner challenged and this has just been awesome for me. So let me just put a little bit on each corner and maybe a strip down the middle. And let me put this on the, let's see, is there a space around it? I believe it goes all the way to the end. But get it straight. If I could see what I was doing, the only bad thing about making videos is you have to work so that you're, you don't block the camera. And unfortunately, that means sometimes I don't get things as straight as they should be. But there we go. So that's done. Um, and adhere this to the Cranberry Bliss panel. So here's the Cranberry Bliss. And if you look at the picture, it shows it's not down it's maybe, you know, a half an inch, three quarters of an inch from the bottom. So I will try to do the same thing here. And let me just put some easy glide. You see how easy this is? And, and you don't press. You don't have to press at all. But I did go run over a little bit there. It's just such a light touch. So let me see. I'm going to probably leave that much. Oops, and that's not. Like I said, just got to watch what I'm doing. And I didn't get that perfect. Again, it's my fault because I'm not over the top where I can see it. Trim off a little bit of that. See I cut that sticky tape and it didn't stick to my to my scissors. Isn't that awesome? But I have just a little bit of overhang here and I'm just a real perfectionist so I like to trim these little overhangs over even though this was just a fraction of an inch. That's just the way I am. And let me measure this to see where this fits. Okay, this has about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Love this tape. When they say easy glide, it is easy glide. I am barely touching this paper. Awesome. Okay, and now I'm going to try to center this. I'll use my grid paper as if I can to help me line this up. And there we go. So there's that. We've got that much done. The next step, ratch, wrap, oh, can't even talk. Wrap the journey thread several times around the Cranberry Bliss panel. Oh, I put this on before I was supposed to. 
that's all right. I don't think I can take, maybe I can take it off. It's not completely stuck yet. Sorry about that. But this is our journey thread. And let's wrap this. I'm going to leave an end because it looks like we're tying a bow. But wrap it around here several times. Like it says. And thread the ends of the journey thread through the button and tie the ends. Okay, so let's go through the button. I don't think I had enough to go around again. I might have, but this will be okay. It's a pretty button. Let's tie this into a bow. Let's pull it tight. I am going to tie a knot first just because it makes it easier to tie my bow. this down a little bit. I do believe it needs to be out of the way of the... there we go. Now we can attach this. Sorry about that, but that should work fine right where it is. I might have to move this a little bit, but I think I can slide it even if it's stuck. Or I can always, you know, it's not hard to do. All I need to do is untie this a little bit. Let me find something to poke in there, which will make it easier to untie. Trusty toothpick. And just slide this down this way a little bit. And then tie another knot and then we can move it where it needs to go. Just want it to go a little bit Closer, right, like maybe right there. That looks good. And then tie my little knot. And then trim off the ends. Don't need big ends. There we go. So that's on there. Now, let's see. We need the... Let's see, where are my foam strips? Here we go. Let me use the big ones. And I like to use my bloom tool to apply these. But put this on the back of the your little basket and if you overlap if you put these it's a little place where I trimmed and didn't break it all the way off if you put these like here see where I've got that on a joint where of four pieces 
that would also add another little area of strength to your weave. Now these are the medium foam squares. They're really nice. Let, let me go back to read my, my instructions. Pop up the oatmeal cookie weave panel using journey foam squares on the left side of the card base. Okay, so let's pull this off. And I'm going to tilt it a little bit. Actually, this is probably too big. It said to trim it. Well, that is three and an eighth. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, they only did five. No wonder I was freaking about this. They only did five, so this is a little bit big. So let me pull my foam square off here and move it down one. And I'll pull this one off here. Hopefully it'll come off without ripping the paper. It did. And come down one. And pull this one off. And come down one. And I'll have to re-ink these again. It said to trim it, but I figured it was already trimmed to the size it needed to be. And obviously, I thought wrong. And I'm just following, again, the outside. I only need to cut one strip off on each side. And just ink that up a little bit and ink this up a little bit and we're still in good shape I'm going to put this at a little bit of an angle. oh that fits much better I shouldn't have worried so much about my weave but that looks really cute there Okay, and then it says, pop up the two pies and whole pie onto the weave panel as seen in the sample picture. So here's the sample picture. And you've got two pies and then the apple on top. So let me do that. Let me get my strings out of the way. I might make that a little bit smaller. So I've got my two pies and my apple, and I'm going to use the small foam dots. Where did they go? I just had them. Oh, here they are. I'm going to use the small foam dots, because these are a bit smaller. And my bloom tool. This bloom tool is just amazing. I'm going to put two on each one. These are the smalls. These are a quarter of an inch. The mediums were half an inch. There we go. I keep everything over here in a little basket. That's why I was a little surprised that some of my stuff wasn't there. But anyway, so let's put the pies down. I'll put one right here. Whoops, that's the paper. We're going to have some fun with this in just a minute. Let me maybe like that. So there's one pie. And here's another pie. I'll put that here. 
and then my apple. So what I think I'm going to do now, and let me find my They had this package of sparkle cuts, which is sort of like a thick glitter. See, it's not quite uh, as fine as most glitters are, but it's mostly clear and sparkly and iridescent. But then there's a, every once in a while you'll see a color in there. Maybe I could pour some out on this buttercream. Okay, can you see the, the colors? See, just every once in a while you'll see a little color. But we're going to use these on the, on, the, on the pies and the apples. I'm going to use Journey Glaze. And I'm just going to put a thin, I do believe... I need a pin to stick down in there. I believe I let it sit open earlier and I shouldn't have. But it happens with just about any glaze. But this is a combination of a glaze and a resin. It doesn't take as long to dry as a resin. But I'm just going to... And it's so clear. It stays clear. It doesn't yellow. Sorry about that. I... Just wanted to make sure this was done, and I was, oh yeah, now it's really open. I probably opened it too much. But I'm just going to use the tip to spread it around a little bit. And I'm going to put some on the apple, but I'm going to wait. Because, first of all, I want to put the sparkle cuts and where is, let me get a paper towel. I usually wipe this off, and I didn't wipe it off last time, so I think I really messed up. And then I also let it sit here for a few minutes before I put the top back on. But let me sprinkle what I put on this card on here. And then I'll put some of this into my hand. Or maybe I could reach down in here and put this on the pies so it'll look like you know those sugar sprinkles that you put on top of the pie and it adds just a real nice shimmer And you just tap the rest off. If I had a jar of this, I would put it into the back into the jar. But look at those pies. Don't they look like the sugar frosting on your pies? And just one more little thing. Let me make my bow just a little bit smaller. But I'm going to add the Journey Glaze on my apple, but I'm not going to put the sparkles on it. I'm just going to, especially this area here, and it will put a glaze finish. Maybe put a little bit here, maybe on the leaf. Just, just enough to give it a little bit of shine. So here is our card, as American as apple pie, and I think that would make a beautiful card. You could send this to someone for any different occasion. You could use it for uh, a birthday. You could say, you know, happy birthday, and then as American as apple pie. If you know if their birth, if you know they like apple pie, or if their birthday is in the fall, which is when apples are plentiful, but 
This is card number three. So I will let this dry. Hope you enjoyed this. Sorry I had so many issues, but it's just because I'm trying to rush through, which is the way I am sometimes. So have a good day, and I will be back with card number four as soon as I can. Bye-bye.